Connect Arm Crossing. And I said, when I asked you in December in my office, and again last week, the week prior to that, I said, you told me that the federal government is just waiting for the state of Alaska to say, let's do this project. That's verbatim. Let's do this project. And I turned to the governor and I said, what the hell is wrong with this? But a little bit more loudly and a little more exuberantly. And that's all I got was a, I don't know. But Steve, when we could be having three quarters of a billion dollars, billions of dollars in our economy, a road down here in Southeast, and I just talked to former Commissioner Kemp last week, and he said the finance on these projects now with what the federal is coming out with the surface transportation plan and federal funding, that the state expects a considerable amount of more money coming in. And we could be having over $600 million coming in on a road down here with Juno Access. Again, former Commissioner Kemp has told me it would save the state over $20 million a year in ferry services. It amortized their investments within just a few years. And we're not doing that. And we're not doing it because of politics. People continue to die on our streets because of politics, Steve. And I'm tired of that. We could have billions of dollars going into our economy, and we're not. And it's time to end this. And if they want me to impose new taxes on the people and take their permanent fund dividends, when they're not using all the tools that we have in our toolbox to create an economy, you want to reduce this budget, have a whole lot of customers for, for public safety and courts and law and corrections and pests. There's my answer. Thank you, Steve. Did you Anybody want else? to answer that? Okay, so so basically, just to get back to your, your question, basically you said that pe people want their permanent fund dividend and uh, they want to cut the, cut the budget. And wh how do we put the pieces together? They want, what I hear from testimony, the public testimony in the last three or four years, from people in your district, they're looking for a full dividend. Mm -hmm. They're looking for budget cuts, but in the same breath, they want more troopers. They want to make sure their road is plowed first. Um, they want the teachers in the, in the classrooms. My question was, is there a formula for that? Okay, so basically, um, as government, it's... Teachers, at, well, mm -hmm. Right, as... Okay, as it stands right now, we spend uh, the budget before us is about twelve billion dollars, and then there's about a billion dollars of receipt authority for AGDC to take from wherever. And of course, you know me; I tried to make sure that all the legislators were able to look at any contracts that were for AGDC before you know a governor gone wild, you know, goes and accepts money and gets us into contracts that we don't have any clue what's going to bind our hands in the future. But I believe $12 billion is plenty for teachers and for road, et cetera. There's a whole lot of other stuff that, that, that we do in the state that we don't need to be doing. And there's a lot, to, and, and you saw the 84 amendments and, and, and several of the cuts that we wanted to propose or that we did propose and, and you saw what happened um, in regards to the House floor. But people in my district do pay a lot of property taxes. They pay for teachers. And so that's supplements as well. I mean, the, 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 all the property taxes that they pay in Eagle River in, in, in the municipality of Anchorage. In addition, um, they pay fuel tax. You know, f fuel tax helps subsidize the roads. And as you know, that's a, a, a a tax that goes back into our road system. So people do pay for the roads and they do pay for the schools. So um, where I really believe is we need to continue to responsibly develop our resources. We've got trillions of dollars worth of resources out there and, and we're a resource rich state. And we have great investors in this state. Sadly, you know, we keep, some people keep trying to impose goofball new taxes and create a very unstable environment. But they, the, the oil companies, for example, pay for their leases. And sometimes that's hundreds of millions of dollars. They pay royalties, which has helped create the permanent fund and the permanent fund dividend. Um, they pay production taxes. They pay federal taxes. In many cases, they pay municipal taxes. They invest billions of dollars in investment in our communities. They create jobs. And for every one job, there's research that shows between 10 and 20 other jobs are created in our economy. So we have to create a very stable investment environment in Alaska in order to, to create a stable economy. So it, it, that's basically mine. I think we need to re, uh, do incredible um, respect for responsible resource development in our state. Um, and I think for me, I think it's, uh, it's about prioritizing. And what we have received from the administration, I think repeatedly does not show that public safety is a priority. 
I don't think they've shown that transportation, transportation and safety on our roads is a priority. We've seen that in my district with Kinnick Goose Bay Road, uh, one of the most dangerous roads in the Matsu Valley. We saw that the governor put that on pause. Uh, putting that on pause now has caused, for example, that project to be delayed for another uh, two years, and that's unacceptable. So let's prioritize. Um, public safety should be number one. Um, Health and social services, is that, a, is that a state mandate? Is that in our Constitution? No, but it's one of the highest budgets that we have been dealt with, and it's something we need to continue to look at to reduce some of those costs that the state is facing. Our teachers, I think it's incredibly unfair that they get pink slips every year. I, I wouldn't want to work in a job like that. Um, we need to make sure that, that that is a priority. Maybe we can change um, in discussions with our school districts to change their uh, fiscal cycle, maybe to a calendar year instead of waiting till July. I don't know, but I think it's incredibly unfair, and that should be, I think, a priority. Um, transportation, absolutely. Roads to resources, we need to connect communities, and we need to have that as a, as a top priority for our state. Thanks. You know, Steve, obviously there's a lot of different opinions on that. Um, those are big issues. And, and I think most legislators are representing the views of the people in their district. They're, they're doing their job, quite frankly, and that's what we're seeing here. But I think what it's going to take is a change in this, met, you know, like a metric of met, cub, cubicle type thing. There's something that's going to have to be changed in the met, metrics that we're working in. There's issues that we're dealing with that are even smaller issues. And, school funding it was mentioned by Colleen you know or local taxes that those are issues are probably gonna have to get resolved first before you can get to the bigger issues and they're just gonna have to change the dynamics of what we have in front of us I think uh, James James Brooks, Brooks from the Juno Empire this one's actually for representative Newman one of the things I've been doing is going around and talking to legislators who were on the House Finance Committee two years ago in June 2016 when the permanent fund issue came up for a vote in that committee, ended up not passing, and we're kind of back in the same situation now. I mean, it, was that a lost opportunity? Have your views changed at all on that, or, or what? How is that experience reflected sure, today? Um, what, what James is referring to is we had the permanent fund dividend bill uh, in House Finance. I was a chair of finance back then, and <coughs> and uh, there was a thought. You know, I I wanted to try and get that on the floor. Uh, Governor Walker had stated at the time that if I wanted to see a permanent fund dividend put on the floor, and if it failed, I will quit pursuing it. And they didn't have the votes. Um, it, it would have failed, I believe. And, you know, quite frankly, also it's a very important issue, James, and people wanted to know what their legislators said on that. And I think that they felt they deserved that opportunity, and I think it should have been on the floor for everybody to be able to see where their legislators stood on that. Uh, I think as part of the process that we have, killing bills that are important bills like that in committee and holding them, I, I, I don't condone that. Um, you know, I, I think that we should continue to move these bills through. There should be public comment on it. We're a diverse group, and none of us have the answers. <clears throat> and it's going to take a com combination of all of us, and that's not going to happen if you're keeping them locked up in a committee like that, in my opinion. And, and again, that's just my opinion. Um, and, and I was the chair of the committee at that time, and, and that was my decision and, and my co-chair at the time, Steve Thompson, to try and do what we could. To, and and us, our speaker um, wanted to try and make sure that we move that out onto the floor and, and make sure that there was a public vote on that. To follow up on something you said and, and Representative Reinbold also said, you had talked about um, committees killing bills. Um, how prevalent would you say that is this year? Um, the idea that something that a bill is being killed by a chairman of a committee or because we're starting to get into the, that phase of the uh, the legislative process and I, you know, I just spoke if you just want to take that or I can take it well I, I can tell you that I, I know what's happening in judiciary um, for example my bill House bill 254 um, he said that it doesn't have a good chance and and, and yesterday I had it of, of having a hearing and and yesterday uh, he said why should I hear that bill and I said because of the public outcry but they're not listening to the people and that really frustrates me I mean when 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 your neighborhoods are having break-ins of their businesses when when people are afraid to go shopping because their cars are getting stolen when people are at the hospital like Alaska Regional or Providence their cars are getting taken we've got a serious a serious public safety crisis out there and it's just falling on deaf ears 
<clears throat> with the people in charge, and I am extremely disappointed that public safety is not being addressed. And I can give you three examples of things that I tried to do in the budget. That the, there was so much animosity with uh, bipartisan, for example, the, the crime lab. I wanted the crime lab, just to, the very expensive audit that got done. There was findings in that audit. I just wanted all of the findings in the audit to be implemented to increase public trust and improve integrity of the crime lab. That went down. I believe it was 21 to 19. That is the most basic, basic thing. I just, it, it flabbergasts me to this day how they could vote no in regards to that. I tried to get rid of the professional conduct unit in DOC. They told us, please look for programs to get rid of. So I was trying to look at some of the newer programs. The professional conduct unit in DOC is a duplicative program already because the state troopers are supposed to be looking at any criminal and HR is supposed to be looking at any personnel issues. So this little pro professional conduct unit that's costing $2 million was a perfect opportunity to reduce the footprint of government. But again, the Democrats, like I said, there's a, about a $12 billion smorgasbord on the table, and they can't even get rid of the potato chips in a recession, and I find that outrageous. And James, because you directed that at me, um, you know, sometimes the committees move bills that aren't ready to move out to. I think that that's happening a little bit, too. You, you've been watching these committees for years, and, you know, the decorum of this building and what happens in that committee process, I think w it's been lacking a little bit, in my opinion. I think that we've lost the stability there. Um, you know, I know that I've been on some committees where the bills just weren't ready to move out of that committee yet, and for whatever reason, they move forward. And I understand that people want to see their legislation move forward, and that's important to them. But I think that, that's, that we're shorting the public and the legislators, or some of us have been around for a few years that have good questions that are, you know, almost feel that you don't want to ask them because you feel like you're taking too much committee time or you're from the chairs, you know. And you've watched this go on quite a bit. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, and if I can follow up on that, too, um, I've been watching House Judiciary pretty closely, and one of the bills that they have held up in Judiciary is the governor's legislation asking to have information from out of state so that our judicial system can actually utilize that with the uh, review system that they have, the trial review system. And for some reason, it's gummed up there. At a time when you really need all the tools that you can um, pull together to get as much information to allow our judges to give a, a, a full sentence based on all the applicable information needed on any criminal that's before them, why would we want to hold that up? So I think that's a, a good, clear example of uh, the ju judiciary chair holding, holding things up, killing the bill. So I, I find that to be unacceptable. And I'd like to add one more. Uh, Senate Bill 63, that's the smoke-free workplace. I believe there's about three-quarters of the people in the legislature that want to see that on a floor. I think this is the fifth year that we've been addressing that. That is being stuck in, in rules, uh, being held up in the Rules Committee, which I'm on the Rules Committee, and I find it very unfair uh, to the people that we represent to not get that bill um, out on the floor. Okay, we're, we're kind of getting close here, James. We'll, we'll take one more, but um, yeah, uh, else then we'll just do a short brief wrap-up. I don't want to bogart the microphone. <laughs> but um, something that's a little different is uh, this week we saw Anchorage's election by mail, their vote by mail. I wanted, none of you are in an Anchorage district, but I wanted to get... Um, uh, kind L Laura, yeah. I think of Eagle River as something kind different. Of a local issue Sorry. Games and, and well, well, but I wanted to ask, um, what are your thoughts about the whole voting by mail concept, and if it's something that could be brought out into um, Alaska as a whole? Like, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't live in Anchorage. I don't know if the other legislators here, but you know, quite frankly, uh, you know, it's to me, it's a local level, particularly at the local elections. You know, you had a uh, election there where you had different bonds on there. Um, those, those should be handled at the local level. Uh, I have no idea what kind of bonds, and if we have statewide elections, I'm not quite sure how that would work. But um, you know, I, I think that should be more of a local level instead of the statewide. I'm not ready to go there yet. You know, we're, at, we're past our time, folks. It's been a great discussion today. I think it's been a great opportunity, a lot of conversations going back and forth, a lot of thought, food for thought. Uh, bottom line, I think everybody here is trying to do the best to represent the people in their districts. A um, lot of diverse views going on here. Um, we'll see how we end up here. I believe we're around day 80 or so. Uh, my goal is to try and be out of here by 90 days. I think that that's everybody's goals. Um, a little bit questionable right now. I think that everybody's going to try and do their best to get there, though. So thank you all for your support, and uh, have a good day. Yep, thank you.